All right, today we are going to be talking about the face mesh. So this is a feature that a lot of people start with uh, when they first jump into Spark. And there's a lot of questions about how to do certain things and how it works and how to smooth things out. And I'm here to uh, basically just give you an introduction and uh, show you some of the tricks that you can use and uh, where to get some of the resources uh, to help you uh, make some really cool things. So. I'm gonna assume you already have Spark downloaded. Uh, I'm gonna be using Photoshop uh, to edit um, some files. If you don't have Photoshop, you can always use um, a multitude of other tools. Uh, really what we're gonna be uh, doing is just uh, needing a transparent PNG uh, in the end. So um, you can use GIMP or, or, or whatever you want to, but I like to use Photoshop because why not? So um, yeah, the first thing really we're gonna do um, is just kind of cover what the mesh is. So let's actually insert one of these into our scene here. So uh, the first thing you wanna do is insert a face tracker, uh, just so you can understand how this works. So uh, everything is a child, everything works as a child of something, so you'll see that we can expand these. So uh, everything is a child of the device, and then the camera is a child of that, and then the focal distance is a child of that, and now the face tracker is underneath focal distance. Underneath the face tracker, we are going to add a face mesh. So now you see there's a checkerboard pattern on my face. Um, that is uh, pretty standard for any type of uh, editing software when you're using uh, materials. Uh, when there is not a material assigned, uh, meaning that uh, if you look over here on the side here, there's a little box that says materials right there. Um, there's not one assigned, so you have this, uh, this checkerboard pattern. So let's start off with a couple of the really um, uh, popular questions uh, that I get, which are things like, uh, how do I make my eyes like white out? Uh, how do I, how do I just do the eyes? So let's cover that. Um, the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you where to download your face references. So if you go up here to help, there's a thing here that says download face assets. That's going to open up a website and you're going to get to here. Uh, I would suggest using this one here. Just go ahead and download it. It's a zip file and you're gonna expand it. Inside of that, we'll just go ahead and expand this one. So inside of that, uh, you are going to find uh, two folders. There's mesh, which is going to have your objects. So we'll, if we just uh, go over here, uh, it's gonna have your face mesh object that you can see here and you can move it around. Um, this is also the same thing, and this is also the same thing. So these are here, um, and here's a head occluder if you don't know what those are. So these are actual models, 3D models, that, um, that you can download and then bring into things like Blender uh, and edit yourself to do face deformations uh, and some other things. But we're going to be talking today about this other folder, which is textures. So if you click here, you'll notice uh, quickly here that we have some, uh, some interesting face texture. So there's this face mesh mask. Uh, there's uh, some tracker points that you can see here. Um, and then we have a, a man and a woman. So what I like to do is most of my users of my effects, I'd say about 75 to 76 percent uh, are female. So I usually start with the female um, mask here. Uh, and start uh, working with that. So the very first thing I'm going to do is just open this JPEG up in um, uh, Photoshop here. So we have our Photoshop document, and uh, it's just literally just that JPEG. Um, what you want to do is just add a layer, uh, and then you can just kind of draw on top of it. So now that you know where everything is going to map to on your face, um, everything that is has the black out here is not going to be part of it so everything that's on the face is going to be part of your face mesh uh, and it's going to cover um, this uh, checkerboard that we have here so let's go ahead and just show you a real world example of what i mean here um, i have a, an alpha that i've already made uh, so we'll just bring that in here we'll just drag it right on top of here so this is a layer uh, that I made already that just whites out the eyes. And one thing that I like to do to make things really symmetrical is really just do it on one side and then copy it and put it on the other side. So if you know how to use Photoshop, that's a pretty standard thing. Um, but I like to duplicate things. That way it's actually truly symmetrical. So, uh, so on this thing, I've literally just whited out the eyes. So all I'm going to do is take away the back to where I just have the eyes here. And I'm just going to export this. 
uh, as a PNG. So when I export this as a PNG, it's going to look uh, like uh, this alpha here, uh, if I can get here. So it's gonna look like this, uh, with this extra white space around it. And so what I wanna do is just take this texture and then map it over here uh, to uh, my face mesh. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're gonna create a material by clicking this plus button over here to add one. It's gonna automatically create a material over here in our material library, uh, our, our asset panel. Uh, let's go ahead and rename it so we can keep track of things. Always a good thing to do. Uh, we'll call it face, actually, sorry, let's call it eyes because that's what we're doing. Eyes is a, oops. Just gonna rename it eyes, uh, just because I'm crazy. So, um, so yeah. So let's go ahead and make our alpha, uh, which is uh, what we're trying to do is make this alpha channel uh, of just use the eyes. So what alpha means is that if I have a transparent PNG, it's make, gonna make everything on the material transparent except for what's not. So if I go here and I select this and I go select my eye alpha, I should get all transparency and my material should only show up on my eyes. And it does, but you'll notice it's just my eyelids. The reason for that is because on our face mesh, we actually are leaving out the eyes by having this checked here. So if you go highlight this and then go uncheck eyes, look at that. Now we have our whited out eyes. Now I've taken a little bit of time uh, inside of Photoshop here to make sure that my drawing, uh, my, my white area here, it overlaps on my inner of my eyelids. So you'll notice that you'll see uh, if I get closer, right, uh, that you can see that there's actually um, eyelid color there too. So I do that on purpose because I don't want that bleed. Uh, when I open my eyes, you can kind of see a little bit of bleed behind there, uh, but that minimizes it. And then I can add some more realistic depth to things. So you can already see it looks a little bit more realistic than just whiting out the eyes. Um, so that really just comes down to the care that you take doing this. So now that we've kind of covered how to white out eyes uh, and how alpha channels work, how to just basically draw on top of that face that you downloaded and then pull it into Spark, um, the next thing really that we want to talk about is, um, let's say I want to do something like repeat my eyes. So you might have seen an effect with multiple eyes. Um, we can use this exact same thing here. So we can actually use the same exact image that we've created because we're already pulling our eyeballs out. Um, not out of our head, but out of our uh, out of our uh, scene here. Um, so what we want to do is overlay our eyeballs, our real eyeballs, uh, on top of this um, alpha, and then move it. So that's actually not that hard. Uh, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is extract the texture from the face tracker. So your face tracker up here has this great feature over here called texture extraction. So the great thing about texture extraction, you just click this button and it treats it right over here and you'll notice it shows up under textures just like my eye alpha image. So this is actually treated like an image and it's treated like a dynamic image that's just being extracted from my face at all times. So what that means is I can come back over here to my material for my eyes apply this face tracker texture to it. Whoa, a little creepy, right? So if I take this, well, we're gonna make it flat because we don't want it to react to light. Okay, so you'll notice that it blends in really well. So uh, the difference between flat and standard is that standard is gonna use these fake dynamic lights, uh, these fake lights in the scene to try to light it. We don't want that. We just want it to look like it does. So there we go. So flat is gonna use no light. So there's actually eyeballs, if you can see, if I zoom in here, there's some really creepy eyeballs floating in front of my face. The cool thing is, is all we have to do now is just take this thing and just move it. Whoa, right? So I'm sure you've seen some effects like this uh, that look just like this. So, and if you want to, uh, you can actually just duplicate this thing uh, or just add another face mesh. Uh, sometimes the duplicate thing can be a little strange. So we'll add another face mesh and we'll add this exact same material to it, eyes, and then we'll take it and we will move it down a little out and then we'll uh, make sure to show the eyeballs. So, whoa. Uh, so yeah, so what's, what's cool about this, if we go back here, let's flip these back and forth. So now I have a couple layers of eyes on my face here, right? A little creepy. Um, so what you might notice is if you zoom in, um, if I get closer, is it's kind of a harsh line, right? Around the eyeball. So how do we get that to not be so harsh? 
Well, it's pretty easy. Again, we're just gonna go into Photoshop. We're gonna take our material here, um, or not our material, our layer here with this eye alpha, and we're gonna go up here to uh, filter, and we're gonna blur it. We're just gonna put a Gaussian blur on it so we can blur the edges out. And let's just really blur it a whole bunch. There we go. Okay, so it's nice and blurred. Uh, so what that means is I'm gonna be able to get that softening that's on the outside here, uh, around the outside, see how soft it is. So I'm gonna be able to get that softness uh, within my PNG. So let's just go ahead and export this again. Um, we will export it to the desktop and we'll just call it Eyes 2, just to keep it track of things. Uh, we'll go back over here and we're gonna replace this with Eyes 2 and look at that. Now, you'll notice that there's some softness around there. Now, if I really play with this and I really get some fading going on, I can make a pretty convincing blend in between my skin here and get multiple eyeballs. Now, you'll see that there's some floating off the face right here, right? So all that is is just making sure that your mesh is really just kind of properly placed. Um, one thing you, when you're doing these effects too, just to make sure that you're always testing, go through here and use other people. So you'll notice that you're gonna have some interesting, interesting things happen when you start using other people in the effects. So the point here is um, if, you, if you really are um, interested in using uh, face meshes, you can use multiple face meshes on top of yourself. Um, so this right now we're just using two uh, and we're and we're able to get these multiple eyeballs. So let's say uh, let's go ahead and what uh, we're gonna kill this eyeball. We're gonna kill these eyeballs, right? So we have no face mesh at all. Let's completely remove um, these textures to where all we're left with is just our face tracker texture that's dynamically putting our stuff in. Um, and let's go ahead and uh, add a uh, another face mesh. Okay, uh, that did not add underneath a child. So you'll notice that that doesn't track to your face. You want to make go up here and make sure that it's actually underneath face tracker. And then look at that, boom, tracks to your face just fine. So if we go up here and we go create a new material again, it's going to create a new material for us. We want to change it first to flat. We wanna take our face texture, put it on there. Now you're gonna notice here, see how my eyes look like they're doubled up in my mouth? So the reason that's doing that is um, there's a couple weird bugs that's going on with this. So the first thing is, is we don't want these holes here to, to leave these holes. So we're gonna uncheck these, but you'll notice I've got some really weird stretching going on with my eyeballs. So this is again, um, just kind of a nuance of the software. All you need to do is go back to your material, change it to, from flat to standard, and then back to flat again and look, no more stretching. So, um, so I have my face mesh, right? So let's say I wanna make an effect that has multiple heads, right? So we'll take this, we'll move it up, back up a little bit here. We'll get my mic a little closer to me. Okay, um, so we'll just do one here and then uh, we'll do, and actually let's scale this down. We'll scale it down so it's not quite so uh, large in the scene. So we'll do uh, 0.25, uh, 0.25, and then uh, 0.25. So we got this little head floating in front of mine, right? So let's take this guy and we'll add uh, another one. We'll add another face mesh to the scene and we're also gonna make this 0.25, 0.25, 0.25, so a quarter of the scale that it's supposed to be. Uh, and we're gonna use the same exact material. But you'll notice, see the eyeballs still cut out there. So I wanna make sure you get those eyeballs in there. Now you'll notice, if I zoom in here, um, the eyes are stretching again. So the way to fix that, again, is to switch back from standard to flat, okay? So um, we have these two heads. Let's move you up to my forehead, okay? Got these two heads tracking them on. So knowing what we know, that means that uh, if we want to, we can smooth out the outside edge of this mesh. So if I am able to get over here and really kind of get into the edge of it here, you can see how sharp that edge is around that mesh. Um, 
we can make it look better than that, right? So the way to do that is to go to your material and you want to, again, add an alpha channel to it because then you can put that nice fade effect. I actually have already created an alpha that I like to use. It looks like this, okay? Um, there actually is one available in your download references folder. If you go back and you look at your face assets again and you go into textures, this one right here, uh, here. So you can see that this uh, basically is accomplishing the same thing. I like to use this one though. Uh, it's just my own and I like the way that it fades and it just gives something unique. So it's something that I built, not something I'm using, right? So go ahead and add that. Now look at that. Now I got some heads floating, right? So the cool thing here is that you can take this and you can really get some good blending. So if I wanted to, I could make an effect with a thousand faces in front of me um, or open my mouth and I have faces coming out of my mouth. So the power of the face mesh is really, really, really cool. You can take them and you can layer them on top of each other. So now that you know how alpha channels work, you know how the eyeballs work. If you just invert that, if you think about it, if you just invert those, then I can have a skin that's red with eyes that are white. They're just two face meshes and one of them has the eyes cut out and the other one has the eyes on it with an alpha channel that I can make look whatever color I want to. So. That's how all of that works. Um, there's, a, there's also methods, if you think about how you want to do things like teeth whitening, uh, you can have two face meshes, one underneath another. Uh, the one on top can match your skin tone and match your color perfectly. The one underneath will just have a lighter. You'll just make it more, uh, more have a higher exposure on it uh, and just have that pass through in the mouth. So when you smile, you get bright teeth. Um, there are ways to fade around the mouth and make the alpha channels around the uh, mouth match up a little better once you do have more, more face meshes. But again, this all comes down with just playing with the software. Um, being able to play with it and um, uh, tinker with it is really how you're going to figure most of this stuff, uh, most of this stuff out. But once you get the basics down, really, of how face meshes work, uh, how to draw on them. Again, like if I wanted to make myself a, a, a mustache, if I didn't already have one, uh, I would just open up this uh, Photoshop, uh, open up Photoshop, and go download uh, the face references, and I could just take it and uh, draw whatever I wanted to on there. Um, so, you know, if I wanted to put a, a nice, you know curly Q mustache with some, with some, with some crazy eyebrows. Now I know what to use. Um, and, uh, and I can just use this and all I have to do is just kill this background and export this as a transparent PNG. And then you can wrap it right to the face mesh or you can extract a face from the face tracker. Another cool thing too, I'm just going to throw this in here just because why not? We can actually add another face tracker. Okay. So this will be a completely separate face tracker than the first one. We want this to track two faces. So now what this is going to do is if I had another face in the scene, this would actually track face two. So what if, if I wanted to, one of the common things that you can do is if you're building your effect. So let's say I have this, I have it set up. I want this to track my face and put these two little faces above mine. That's my effect. And then when I want my friend to come into the scene and I want her face to show as well, uh, with that same effect with her face stacked on there, all I need to do is right click, go to duplicate, and look at that. I have another face tracker. Just make sure that you go over here and you select second face. That will track the next face. You can keep adding face trackers all the way up to five. Again, make sure you go over here and you make sure that you're selecting that face. And then um, when you go down to your face mesh and you're going to create a new material on here, you're going to have to... Um, extract um, another texture out of this. So if you extract this, now you have your face tracker one texture and you can start extracting your texture from there. So again, you just kind of keep on building on things and keep on working with them and, and, and you'll find out that, you, that you're that um, you a lot more experienced than you think you are if you just kind of have the curiosity to go through with it. So thanks again for watching. Um, again, I'm gonna start making a lot more of these. I know that this is uh, for people who are really into the deep, development pieces of this. This might seem a little basic, but we have a lot of people who are starting out who really just need to have the fundamentals down before uh, we start getting in any, anything that's uh, like visual shader heavy, which to be honest with you is not my arena. So um, maybe we can invite uh, um, some other people in there to talk about that. So uh, I do want to end also talking about um, some great things. So there's some, oh, great, some great tools that you can use and I'll put the links to them in, in the um, 
in the description of this video. Uh, but the first one really is comes down to this tool here that Mark uh, Wakefield designed, uh, which is a face texture extractor. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to go ahead and show you another version of this. This will um, send a, a um, uh, the ability to, well, let's go ahead and run it. What the hell? Okay, so we'll just go ahead and send that to there. We'll go to our Facebook app, and then we should have an alert um, come through here. We did not send notification. There we go. Okay, so this is something that was built by Mark Wakefield, and what it is is it's a tool to actually grab a texture from a face. So I'm going to unmount my phone here, and I'm going to, so you can see it actually mapped my face there. I'm actually going to use um, this, uh, which is a, an image that I found. I would suggest if you use any kind of makeup tutorials, you always need to either get permission or credit the artist, always. But for this purpose, I'm going to use this. So we're going to go ahead and take this, right? And we're just going to take this photo. Boom. So what I can do is save this photo. And then I can take this and pull this photo into Photoshop. And now I can overlay this on top of... Um, on top of the um, the face asset. So if I go into here and I over and I airdrop this to myself here. Let's airdrop the size that wants to work. Um, so anyway, so what you can do is you can take this and you can send it over. Um, you can clearly see basically where we're, where we're getting at with this, which is, oh, there it is, of course. So, um, the idea is you take this uh, texture that you've that you've uh, extracted. Here we go. Send this over to myself. Great. So what I want to do is take this. We're gonna actually going to take this into here, and we are going to blow this up. Let's show you a couple tricks of what you can do. Okay, so let's make um, our real one visible and let's drop the opacity of the one we're trying to line up so we can actually get it lined up. So you can see that lines up pretty well. So as long as I fit it on there pretty well. So what that means is I can actually go through here and on top of this, trace, literally trace my lines and draw you know, a pattern. Uh, when I'm done, all I have to do is uh, just hide the uh, hide the person. Uh, obviously, that doesn't look super great right now, but uh, but you can hide that, and then you just export it. And that way, you can take things like some complex face paints uh, or other textures that you see on top of people's faces, and you can pull them in and then overlay them and then export them as a transparent PNG and then import them into Spark, and there you go. So you can put face tattoos on people. You can literally take a photo of a famous rapper that you are desperately wanting to put face tattoos on your face. It looks just like theirs. This is a really easy way to do it. Uh, you can literally just take a photo of their face and then import it and then do a little bit of editing inside of Photoshop uh, and then export it as a PNG and then you're good to go. So um, that is, uh, those are super helpful. There's also this other one that Mike Mann created um, who's another great creator um, that is a project that you can run uh, locally. So um, one of the cool things about doing that is if you are to... Um, if you do want to um, run this uh, while you are, let me see if I can just drop this in here. No. If you do want to run this locally, you uh, don't have to use Mark's tool. You can actually just go ahead and open up uh, his version of his project. Let's go and say open anyway. And there you go. So this is what his looks like. He's actually extracting the face off of the gentleman in the video. Let's go to mine. Uh, but you can see that it works uh, almost identically. Um, Marks has some guidelines that you can use to line things up, but it works exactly the same. And then you just take a photo, uh, take a snapshot with your Spark AR player, uh, which we'll go ahead and again show you how to push to that. Go down here, push to it. There you go. So now I have that running on here. So now I can take my phone. I can go anywhere, take some, take a picture of someone's face, and literally take that and put it on top of mine. So um, pretty cool, powerful stuff coming out of the community. Um, again, if you're not a member of the community, you should definitely go join the mem the, the community. Um, it's it's on Facebook, and uh, it is um, the Spark AR community, which you can see right here. 
um, I would highly suggest going here and, uh, and boning up on your stuff. So thanks again for watching. Um, if you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments. I'll try to answer them as best as I can. I get a, a lot of questions, so I'll try to answer as many as I can, but, um, but hopefully this has uh, kind of enlightened you as to how some of this stuff works behind the scenes. Thanks.